a blissful uh, morning to one and all present over here. Technology is transforming the way the world works, but are we ready to embrace the transformation and keep up with the technological changes? In the past, a one-size-fits-all approach to education was considered sufficient. But today, students come from diverse backgrounds and have a unique learning needs and style. By embracing a tech-driven blended learning approach, higher education institutions can utilize online learning platforms and virtual classrooms to provide students with exceptionally flexible, equitable, and interactive experience. Blended learning with technology ensures that students have access to best-in-class education with limitations like geopolitical boundaries. Teachers and students living across vast geographical barriers and time zones can now come together with easy. This enhances the overall education quality and helps the students reach their potential. Furthermore, in a blended learning environment, the new and sophisticated AI-driven chatbot, ChatGPT, can be used as an online tool to supplement the traditional teaching methods. ChatGPT even goes as far as providing learners with the immediate support and feedback, ensuring a well-rounded and personalized learning experience that meets their individual needs. By providing students with the technology to build future-ready skills, we can prepare them for rapidly changing landscape of modern workforce. These skills include not only academic knowledge, but also skills like critical thinking, digital uh, literacy, collaboration, adaptability, and also problem solving. Educators need to explore how the synergy between the technology and learning can enable better access, greater efficiency, and improved outcomes in the education settings. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vanishri, uh, Dean Research and Consultancy from Surana Education Institution. Ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to welcome you all to today's discussion. We are here to engage in an insightful conversation on how we can prepare our students to become the workforce of the future. So without further ado, uh, I would request Amit Pawar, uh, Director Education Modern Workplace uh, Asia, Microsoft India, to further set the stage of today's discussion briefly before we deep dive into the discussion board. Good morning, everybody. Hey, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. This is a pleasure for me. My first real trip, as I was telling my colleagues, I'm not just pixels, I'm a real human. But they've never seen me, so even the Microsoft India team has never seen me. I'm based out of uh, Singapore, and I have the pleasure of working with uh, customers now across the world. Until four weeks ago, I was only looking after the Asia zone for Microsoft. Uh, because of changes in the Microsoft workforce and other things, I'm now with the pleasure of working across the planet, which is a no sleep kind of a job. So, <laughs> but to do, do kind of uh, enable that, I couldn't do my job without the technology we are talking about in, in this case. So I'm a direct case in point of how technology is enabling new jobs that didn't exist. When I was studying computer science back in the 90s, if I, if I said uh, this was what my job would be, I would have never dreamt that. So I think, you know, to everything that you just said, Dr. Lani, I think that's um, appropriate. Uh, that, you know, we are living in a world where technology is a given. I think that reluctantly are the boys. Everyone's, everyone's here. So as a, as a, somebody who was reluctant as a Microsoft employee, because in the nineties, I wanted to work for IBM and Sun, which were the real computer companies, not at Microsoft, which is a, in those days was just a PC company has now evolved into being the leader in many areas, including our favorite chat GPT that is on top of the group's mind. So if anyone wants to wonder who is facing up to Microsoft side of that conversation, that's me. So I am learning as much as everybody. Okay. As, as I come to this table as a learn it all, not know it all. So that's the, that's the, uh, that's the mindset I'm raising to this table as well. With that, I think one thing that I've noticed in my conversations in the last nine years that I've had the pleasure of being in Microsoft Education, is interesting to me to see how much digital transformation in industry depends on the digital transformation in higher education and the book goes around. The digital transformation in education will impact industry because it's your, as you've said rightly, sir, your children, I love it. And not even your students. I love the affection you're showing to your own kids, students who are like family to you, which is true because they are spending a lot of time with you. And that honestly for me is, is 
how I, how is the workforce that you're generating enabling industry people like us at Microsoft and all the names that we have learned, Texas Instruments and so many others, um, evolve our own platform, which leads to more technology, which leads to more of this conversation. So it's a vicious circle. Uh, what we are, you know, very fortunate to have is being able to be a partner to many higher education institutions across the planet. And I will break it down into four areas because that's probably the easiest way for me to, uh, you know, have this conversation with you. Skills and employability definitely is, is on top of that. But for me, the other area that we are def, uh, also looking at is skilling, right? Um, because when, when I look at this, we're also looking at it as, as a continuum. Microsoft works in any schools. Like I'm working with preschools in Singapore, uh, as an example. You have kids who are like literally three and uh, and I, I know there's a new NEP with just the five plus three plus three plus four. That's a, that's a good initiative for us to also be participating right at that end. So we can then go from that to secondary to higher education and then into lifelong learning for skills as well. So in those, in the three areas, we are definitely focused on how do we embrace this new world of, um, you know, hybrid learning, hybrid learning that has been enabled by technology as one enabler, but not the only enabler and technology used rightly in that, in that context as well. I think the ethics conversation is absolutely top of the agenda. Uh, especially now with AI being introduced, ethics becomes even a bigger conversation than it was, say, three months ago. AI to us is augmented intelligence, not artificial intelligence. We want to augment the human, the, and of course the artificial angle to it, and augment the human's capability to then interact with that system. That's how we are looking at the development of our products. I'm, I'm very fortunate that I go to meetings like this. I get to literally send an email to the product owner and send them a you know recommendation on what is working in Japan, what's working in India. I love what you guys are doing here in terms of the collaboration with the industry. That to me is is actually quite leading, to be honest, when I listen to what's happening across the world as well. And and that conclusion of the global uh, you know professors and also industry professors coming in, or professors of practice, I love that film as well. So I'm gonna borrow that and use that in the, in my next conversations. But that's how we are actually thinking about this. I'll wrap it there. And if there are any questions or any feedback, I'm happy to take that. But there's a lot more discussion to be had. Yeah. So. Shani, Shani, Shani. Uh, thanks, Amit, for setting the context for today's session. I'm sure there were a lot of pointers for us for the taking the, the discussion forward in terms of skill, um, hybrid learning, ethics, and governance, which is the major uh, discussion which we would kind of like to take it up. Uh, enhancing or embracing the technology and also the augmented in, uh, intelligence instead of artificial intelligence. Okay, augmented intelligence is something which is quite interesting even for an academicians like us. So now let me introduce our esteemed speakers for this panel discussion. Um, let me start uh, introducing Shashidhar MS, Professor and Head uh, MCA, uh, AMC Group of Institution. Sanjay uh, Titnis, a Dean School of Computer Science and Engineering, RV University. Uh, Chandrakala G. Uh, Raju, Head of uh, uh, Information Technology, VMS College of Engineering. Uh, Dr. Mahesh KM, Principal, Shri Bhagwan Mahavi Jain Evening College. Nandini C., Vice Principal, Professor and Head, Department of CS and E. AI. Dhyanan Sagar Academia uh, of Technology and Management. Dr. Chitra Ravi, Director, CMR School of Science uh, Studies. Dr. Samir, um, Samiruddin Khan, Dean School of CSE and IS, Presidency University. Murli Thar, uh, Director, the ICFI. Uh, Dr. A.C. Ashok, Principal, uh, Dayanand Sagar Medical College. Sujit K.C., Associate Professor, IT, International Institute of Information Technology, Bangalore. Sandeep Bansal, Associate Director of Reva University, Dr. Moho Mohan Babu G.N., Principal, the BMS Institute of, uh, of Technology and Management, Dr. Ivan Jos, Professor and Dean Engineering, Christ University, uh, Akash Sharma, Director Information Technology, uh, Indus International School, Amit Pavar, uh, Director Education, Modern Workspace Asia, Microsoft, uh, Dr. G. Gita, Director J. University, and Chandrasekhar S, uh, Vice President, Customer Success and uh, Sales uh, Engagement, and Lobby. 
uh thanks for joining uh, us uh for this wonderful panel discussion let us start uh with uh, for, uh let me start the question with you amit okay because you are the industry uh, partner for us so i would like to take the first question with amit ordo so <laughs> what according to you are the key challenges in the higher education space that could be translated to opportunities with technology yes this is a good question and i did prepare a slide for it but i'm not projected because i'm sitting in front of everybody so um but essentially what we're seeing today is when and why is digital transformation the right thing to do i mean there have been conversations we've had where is this technology the answer for this particular situation that you're going to and a lot of times the obvious answer is yes but the real answer we is maybe so we need to explore some of those possibilities as well uh and as we see uh, us coming out of the uh, pandemic we are looking at three kind of uh phases that are happening in in how institutions are uh responding uh are showing resilience or refreshing themselves and then the next is this new phase of reimagining and transforming right and not just by using teams as a video conferencing tool but more as how are we using data and ai how are we using uh analytics to actually enable new insights into how students are learning how students are interacting with each other uh policy changes budgetary pressures uh the student journey is something that we spend a lot of time on um because the student journey as i was saying to the uh, earlier on the gentleman when we were talking this morning is students are coming to education institutions already having experienced customization or personalization of the thought the YouTube tells them what to watch next, Netflix tells them what what to watch based on what they've seen, Amazon tells them what to buy based on their previous buying patterns, but that may not always translate into that experience in education. Um and there's that a full hybrid part where either I come to class or whether I do things online or a crossover. In fact, universities in Australia just to share an example, like University of New South Wales or I'm Alba Mater. Um they have actually introduced hybrid for every class doesn't matter Red, whether the students actually come to class or not they still join the team scope the reason for that there is inclusion conversations to be had there are some students who actually interact better through that means than raising their hand and talking in class we still need to capture their thoughts still need to give them a students a voice so that student voice is a huge part of our uh, you know platform enabling that So there are many angles to this what I've just covered three or four that I thought would be useful for our conversation today as a seed thought. Yes, thank you for the seed thought uh, Amit. So uh, I'm sure you have given us so uh, the concept of like how technology and mental hygiene instead of mental disorder like let us take a new word like mental hygiene yeah. even in our institution we talk about this. So how technology and mental hygiene is taken in a balanced manner in the space so let us go to the second uh, question um sanjay uh, and chandrakala i would like to take this uh, question uh, with you both so uh, uh there is more and more use of emerging technologies uh, such as uh, artificial intelligence machine learning virtual augmented reality and blockchain in education could you share your experience with these technologies and their potential impact on teaching learning process Sanjay, I said I would like to take it up this year. It, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, it was really interesting discussion and a uh, very good points from all of you. They yeah, had been working in field of AI since 1985. Uh, when I did my masters in Madhya Pradesh, my project was in machine learning. Uh so I've been seeing really tremendous uh, revolutionary things happening but now it is going not only revolution or board right. People are talking about singularity now where AI kind of platforms may actually start doing the work what human used to do not just the regular work but even research and technology development work so in that case the speed of technology development is going to accelerate everything right and ai coupled with robotics and uh, quantum computing probably is going to give tremendous amount of resources right which will kind of all human race put together on earth right so we multiple billion times more than that also right so it's is a scary on one side that we have to be really very really alert what's happening not only in terms of human minds and what we do our society but also in terms of uh, you know how how it is going to go forward right so now we come to uh, those things which computers can do better but still people have to do better right so for example we want our students to learn coding right but yes already 
ChatGPT all the today it is with lot of errors but very soon it's going to know overcome that apart from that yes there will be definitely at any given point of time things which are humans can do better so that's what we have to keep on learning people talk about 21st century skills there is a lot of buzzwords with nap uh, etc like that right? so we have to really focus on that and train our students so that uh, they are in command right and they are making use of all these ai robots to increase their productivity so coming to education and technology right that's the main point too. so 21st century skill is very important and uh, what thing is we talk about project based learning etc but it has to go finally to work integrated learning so whether it's right from school level people have to start contributing to society right kandhi ji had lot of philosophy of education right one of that was socially useful uh, skills like that right so that's what we have to start with so it is more of an integrated model what it is yeah. so there was an american educational is it uh, dewey so he said that education is not preparation for life education is life itself so the time has come to do that we start doing life right from beginning and that's what we start with so here i would like to head thanks sanjay uh, chandra kala uh, would you have some pointers to make in light to this said like it is all human made it said we man tact it we peer whatever block technology anything we take it is all made by us and uh, we should we will be knowing where we should cut through it as well and uh, it, it has come to the challenge of education thing now that teachers are to be upgraded so that we should teach our students such a way that they should be able to write their own chat gpts and control the chat gpts so that it is and uh, at the right place now we have an nep integrated for higher education as well and as autonomous institutions are already started their projects in the first year itself like continuous integrated continuous learning models and the students are already familiar with all these technologies when they come out of the secure institutions so now it is the challenge for teachers to upgrade and then come forward for making our students to more ethical so that is why what we should concept we should concentrate on nowadays the child's what we are under what we are undergoing uh, in our uh, in our institutions and wherever we are going at home if we start with that home itself but due to the corona of two or two or three years of the, uh, the students <coughs> behavior itself has changed so that is what uh, i feel the technology we should invent such a way that we should make them the more ethical more value added citizens for our country thanks so much and rakala so basically what we got a point to is that okay how human technology and human minds are getting into a different world game and also like um, the research part what sanjay said very true that okay when we did our doctorate and all we had done five years ka entire three or six years ka study and all now it is only a three days or four days and just open it up 24 by 7 finished up my entire phd research papers have become very easy to do it up thanks to the entire technology what we have it up but we as uh, but of the techno uh, chandrakala said very clearly ethical behavior attitude everything has to be taken care because ultimately we are all humans and technology is a tool which will support us to smooth sail the entire process so it's more of a uh, knowledge creation platforms for us how do i use chat gpt or blockchain and all to create a new sort of knowledge which will easy the lot of process of my uh thanks for the insights of both of you Uh, so let me go to the third question to Dr. Mahesh, uh, Dr. G. Geeta, and Molita. Uh, so uh, the question goes like this: uh, What are the key challenges uh, involved in implementing emerging technologies of higher education? How can an educator overcome them? I'm sure uh, Chandrakala Ma'am's question would be answered. We are talking about the capacity building. Okay. So talent is the key to success. whether it is student whether it is faculty whether it is anyone working in industry so gone on those days like you prepare a curriculum you prepare a syllabus and keep it there for four years it's it's no more like that so last year the syllabus was prepared for ai the same thing i cannot use it it this year so when we are basic syllabus again the challenge is you know what are the things to be added here on so many new technologies within 45 hours so we have like if it's a three credit course we have 45 hours so within that stipulated time how much we can teach we adopt see um, even uh, for the syllabus preparation 
So it's it's very interesting when you when we uh, start using ChatGPT. Coming to the faculty training. So as I said earlier, faculty training is a key challenge. So our, as already uh, mentioned, our students and our children are more tech savvy than us. So they learn from different sources which even we are not aware of. So uh, I can tell you this: they, they don't just uh, use ChatGPT. They use multiple AI resources. I'm not sure whether faculty members are aware of all those technologies which the students are using. So they have to upgrade themselves. So that, that's one of the uh, key things which we have to look into. And when students go for internship, we also have to send the faculty members to go to industry to upgrade themselves. So what is the current technology? What are the current practice in the industry? So that faculty also, so during, you know, we, we have like 30, 40 days uh, lean period. So faculty also should go to industry and learn. So I think that will uh, definitely help them. So this is one thing, using technology, how the faculty are upgrading themselves, using technology, how they are teaching, and what are the kind of lab exercises and course projects which the faculty has to design. It's simply, uh, you know, they cannot uh, take the exercise and give the students, students will complete in two minutes, correct, right? So, and also there are two different sets of students in that class. All students are not, like if you have 60 students, so around, uh, you know, 30 to 40 students, uh, you know, they are, you know, mediocre students, they will listen to whatever you say. There are like 10% of the students who need more attention. So you have to plan your exercise according to them. There are like 15, 20% of the students, you know, who are, you know, super intelligent. Correct. Right. So you have to, you know, give challenging problems. So for one set of, the same chat GPT uh, example, I'll tell you. So to one set of students, I can give them, you know, how will you prompt to get better output from chat GPT? To other set of students for the so or the so-called super intelligent students, so we give them like how do you write a module? So basically, you categorize the students and it tells the students, and we give different sets of uh, problems assignments to them and it is, yeah. assess them accordingly. Assess them. So okay, so it, it is really challenging for the faculty members. It, it's not only teaching. Teaching is not the only job of it. It's she is a like consultancy, project proposal writing, publication, correct. Right? There are so many other aspects uh, we have to look into. And also have a space for the faculties to do their research or consultancy work because you have given that uh, particular segment to the MOOC and the students have to complete that. Complete. Yes. So, so they do it at their own pace. Correct. They do it at their own pace and th those are also being evaluated. So we need to work on it. Uh, you know, all the educational institutions, we need to look at it in a different aspect, like how we evaluate our students. It's no more uh, pen and paper at touch. So that's one thing where we need to use technology more end to end. End to correct. That is something a very uh, notable point, man. Can I hear it from Dr. Viram Mahesh? Uh, the take on as a Agis teacher from past uh, 15 years as a teacher, I missed with the, all the technology people and the three things the world is looking now. One is uh, education, another is technology, and another is health. So when we talk about the ethics, we talk about the health. As an administrator, I have to look into the three angles. One is managing the students, outcome of the students' outcome, learning outcomes. Another is how I connect with the uh, students with the office staff as an administrator how ERP that we can develop and quick response to the students. Sending messages, result oriented, internal marks, evaluation, uh, assessing the students in terms of the objective type. Now most of the papers, now what they are preparing is, as an affiliated uh, institution, affiliated to the state university, I have to follow certain governance of the state university. And we had to look into the staff also, office staff. How I can build as an administrator, as a teacher, as a researcher, as a, a, a student when we should. I categorize it to three concepts. One is act, another is art, another is role. So three angles I look into that. Role as an administrator, how I can facilitate to the students how I can responsible to the students and the parents and the uh, office staff. How I can manage the teacher health. Suppose they are not attending the class to deliver the lecture, classroom lecture. As a role, 
I have the greater with the help of technology. I can solve what Ma'am Geeta Ma'am has explained. We can facilitate the students where the teacher is a, is on leave for a health reasons. So we can use the technology and replace the uh, teacher and the different subject. Uh, the technology that is online coaching or online uh, modules as a role that is a greater responsibility and uh, to build the capacity building for the teachers with the technology there. Now we have a AI is then as a syllabus in the NDP. We are seeing that skilling is very very important for the teachers, but not only for teachers, for the students also. With the technology, with the uh, with collaboration with the certain companies like Microsoft, they have the certain course online courses that definitely will build. But outcome is very very important. At the end of the day, when the students is step out from the our institution. When you visit, you'll get the practical things. That is very, very important. We have to see that uh, they have outcome is very, very important. Responsibility, we have to create responsibility along with the technology. And we have to take care of the health also. Then. So I, as an administrator, as a teacher, as a facilitator, I'll, uh, I'll say we should act as a human by following the human principles with the technology uh, input. So basically one solution should turn things up so that the errors can be minimized. Yeah, by using the technology we are to pay the shoulder is something which we are looking up. Yeah. So your act, art, role will have a lot of input so to easy the process of students because when the students enters what marks he scores and how do the entire process goes on because every marks has a lot of uh, play in their life. So uh, can I hear from Mordithar, uh, what is your take on the key challenges, uh, yeah. 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 yes sir, yes. sorry. Yeah, good morning to all. Yeah, one of the basic challenges uh, in adopting technology in um, academics, education, is basically academic institutions are not very proactive. How do we overcome this? Yeah, so one of the things that happened was the pandemic forced us to adopt technology. Blessing need is cancelled. So, we are, one is awareness in terms of what technology can do. Okay. So, it starts with that. So, maybe this is one of the platforms that uh, can help us in terms of interacting and networking and finding out what others are doing and also what the industry is providing in terms of uh, the technology solutions. So, that is one of the things and we have to keep learning in terms of getting exposure to what is possible. And then another uh, uh, issue which uh, we see is that the availability of adequate resources. Like when we had to you know, compulsorily move to the blended learning, hybrid learning and things like that, we have to install a lot of uh, new infrastructure. So all the institutions may not be able to afford, to do that, afford that. Good. So we had to use smart boards so we, and it had to be done quickly. So all institutions may not be able to afford that kind of infrastructure for facilitating use of technology. So maybe the industry can work with the institutions and uh, see how they can make these technologies affordable. And when with the you know advent of this chat GPT and all that, naturally, if you want uh, the faculty members to use it, they'll also be afraid in terms of what is their relevance. So that will have to make sure that they are able to you know give a clear indication to them how they can supplement or uh, you know complement their uh, input along with these uh, you know solutions which are available and. Uh, Another major challenge that we have faced when we actually wanted to implement the hybrid learning, the online learning, etc., is the access. Students, uh, you know, they are at remote locations. And uh, sometimes they use it also uh, for convenience. Whenever you ask a question, they'll say, my network is. Yeah. Um, the answer is telling the better about it. Teacher. And the biggest problem you have faced, I don't know how technology can provide a solution so that they don't switch on videos. They, they never. <laughs> so you don't see them. So you have, you now we conduct in between some quizzes you've been there where we really want to you know, make them participate. These are some of the things that we have done, but still it remains a challenge. I don't know how we can overcome that. And uh, another aspect which we need to keep in mind whenever we are, you know, are trying to uh, use technology in a big way and uh, making students use these uh, resources is what is the impact, you know, effect in terms of their continuous exposure to the video screens? Right, what is the effect on the eyes? So their eye, they are going to have, you know, a lot of problems with the eye. So what, how do they? In fact, when we had this online 
um, glasses. We used to have an instructor, yoga instructor, he used to give them inputs in terms of how to do eye exercises. In between classes, we used to have, you know, you, you know, do the eye exercises. How, basically, the challenge is how we can have a right combination of in-person because there is a advantage and uh, a necessity to have in-person learning. And the combination of technology and in-person is something which uh, we need to look at. Yeah. And uh, most important thing is that whenever we are talking about blended learning, hybrid learning, etc., self-motivation and the discipline is one of the most important things that students have to possess. Okay. Which has to be built in, but as of now, we have been controlling students when they are in front of us. So when they are independent, do they have the same kind of motivation and the same discipline to learn on their own and then complement the learning that happens at this yeah. phase. So that is something like we are looking up uh, learn and learn and relearn process both for the students and the uh, faculties teaching fraternity so that we will go along with the technology. Thanks for the points what uh, all the three of members who gave it to me. Can I go to the next question to Akka Sharma uh, and Lassi <coughs> and also to Samruddin uh, uh, Khan. Uh, the question is like this, how do you think AI driven technology like chat uh, GBT can enable the personalized learning experience for students and how can it be used to access the students learning and progress more effectively than traditional assessment method? Would you like me to request? So when we talk about this, you know, uh, traditional learning, yeah. we say yes or no. Who? Hmm. That's it. Right. And yeah, whatever we are doing this way is like when you are asking in the tradition, if the when you are teaching the student, then it is coming yes or no, and then that way. Another one is coming like a, when you say authentic assessment, how they verifying the solution based on how the student comes into what is the internet and uh, solve the challenges and problem. So that is one. Another one you could say like you know uh, it can be. Evaluate immediate in chat GPT that predictive or pre uh, and prospective and descriptive. So that is what I understand that. Another thing what we can say, like you know, what, everyone knows that chat GPT. What is the advantage? What is the disadvantage? So advantage wise, if we see this one, it is available 24-7 anytime. Then it is uh, personalized uh, learning as we do and that we are talking on this now. Then it is giving this accurate and quick answers in the chat GPT that imposes the study and skills and the management that is there then motivation that also is giving this chat GPT but when we see like you know chat GPT uh, people are getting dependent people students are getting addicted on this game what is there what the answer is there write to the content on the chat GPT he will copy and paste it there so what is happening in that you are not if we will as a uh, lecture, faculty, parent will not come to know that what is really they are using brain or no. So that is a drawback also. But if you see in this one, chat GPT, it's really good in a positive way. That is my point. Okay, can I hear from Nandini? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, respected uh, dignitaries, a very valid uh, inputs we have been getting from all the panel members. Uh, I feel uh, uh, it is much more complex from the faculty side to assess the students with, by using this chat GPT. So how best we can uh, with respect to traditional and to this modern base, uh, some more improvements may have to be made with the chat GPT so for the students with the dashboard and the GUI interface so that uh, as Madam was saying, classify the students as to top intelligent, mediocre and the low and make them to work on that. Uh, for the different applications that uh, with their interest or for the problem being given by the faculty side with the way we be a project oriented or the societal problems then we can learn from the the three different categories of students as to how they are scaling up and also I have happened to see with the latest um, um, eco life wherein the artificial um, uh, uh, um, the fertility being generated mainly for the people of Japan and Bulgaria where everything it is a complex interdependence of technologies which is making the today to move on to the next level of AI to be implemented. So it is uh, definitely a very difficult for the student side as well as from the faculty as well as from the IT 
to incorporate it practically uh, just not speak at the superficial level to in order to assess the students we can uh, assess it each step wise whereas here as been said by akash sharma sir it is uh, 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 more uh, towards the output so they will be not knowing the underlying concepts as to how it is working so it is very difficult uh, from the faculty side to assess the students because ev- everybody uh, i think uh, even the lawyer and the mediocre also will be doing well by using such uh, apps that is why uh, the recession what we are facing today the underlying concept the techniques behind it is not been um, reached to the students as well as very to the faculties so that implementation has to be that's uh, this we require laboratories for that to be this what that come to again sir how do you take yeah, the book yeah very good of good afternoon to all of you uh, i would like to you know uh, present my perspective about the question you asked i basically talk in favor of chat gpt and uh, i think we possess that meta intelligence as a human being to outfit any software which we have built and I, i don't think we need to be afraid of it it can be a very good friend of us way back in 2020 i had come across wiley and pearson uh, group basically these people flock around the faculty for asking uh, maybe they are, they ask us for recommendation of their books and all so one of the representative it also we have a platform a learning platform developed for the students you know which is basically the intelligent uh, tutoring uh, system i was more keen and interested to know how it works so it was basically ebook and uh, students are you know uh, able to log into that portal and start reading the ebook and the software records everything about uh, the pace with the students learning the speed and what kind of questions he is answering whether he is answering difficult questions or not so this was something amazing you know uh, i i could find that little amount of ai working behind it and this really helped the students you know to overcome all those challenges which they faced in the classroom when a teacher could not uh, attend to each of the students you know needs so 2009 i had uh, come across a lms called new lms um, very the takers were very few very few subscribe for it and i had to push it around but it did not come um, you know and so fast now i find that with chat gpt kind of applications or ai applications coming into picture the modern pedagogy can be implemented flawlessly or seamlessly for example take peer instructions you can make peer instruction more uh, you know uh, effective when you ask chat gpt to generate immediately uh, multiple choice questions that can you that can be you know uh, immediately given to the students where the students can answer and you uh, get that uh, big data and the data analytics working behind the software generating the pattern giving the analysis of the entire class where the faculty can you know understand how much assimilation is going on how much of the learning is going on and then the faculty can tailor the uh, you know uh, lesson plan and all to see that where things are gray and where things are bright and then comes uh, the the question of you know chat gpt doing assignments for the students so i think we need to flip this uh, concept where flip class is already there you make the student learn at home and do the activity in the classroom in front of the faculty where he doesn't get the chance to you know use chat gpt or all and research paper says sir said you know sanjay sir said is yes if it can write a research paper also but if you see the flaws in the loopholes in that software it cannot put citations and references because that's the area where it has got a uh, you know limitation so assessment has become a challenge definitely but you know uh, we have been blessed with meta intelligence as a human beings we need to understand what kind of endowments we have got from god i was going through i think uh, dr ashok kumar will correct me if i am wrong uh, a human brain has got 100 billion neurons you can never match it yeah and for an order of it can it can you know uh, form an order of uh, 100 to 500 trillion synaptic connections and if you if you uh, you know measure the intelligence of a human being with this scale chat gpt is 1000 x smaller than us and there's something which everybody should f- feel proud of and be confident that you know uh, chat gpt is not a threat at all to us so basically we are trying to have an insight like we are connecting the dots we are connecting the dots and 
that um, when you design your pedagogy, the course, ensure that you're teaching, learning, your descriptions, and output and outcome is all aligned. Aligned. Faculty's role have evolved to a very, very large extent to understand how do I make myself as a relevant in the given context. That is a major challenge. So sustenance of teaching is also something which we also have to look up if we don't gear up to the technology. So I would uh, thank all the three panelists okay, who gave a lot of insights of it. Uh, so let us go on to the next question to Dr. Ba Mohan Babu and also Dr. Ivan Joes. Um, in the context of technology-driven learning becoming increasingly relevant, what are the ways in which blended learning can promote uh, the education equity? Yeah, good afternoon to you all here. The workforce in this industry of corporate sector today, about 95% of the workforce of the industry today, especially in India, comes from you know these kinds of university and colleges and not from IITs or NITs or something like that. They cost, cost it about 7 to 8 percent, that's all. That means the industry's competitiveness in the coming days depends upon the workforce that I'm talking about, that is 95 percent. And that 95 comes from rural background, a CST background, everywhere. Unless you, unless we make enough effort, a sincere effort to make that uh, education stronger, you can't dream of future workforce around in the future. Yeah, we have very good education being in the urban centers and the fortune, being fortunate in, you know, but the question is, many of our friends already said the kind of challenges, maybe in terms of infrastructure, maybe in terms of bandwidth. In fact, somebody was talking about, you know, students not being attentive or switch off and go away. That's true. But I personally have seen that when we are operating on, let's say, 4G, students in Nepal, who are our students, will be operating in 3G or 2G. They are unable to connect at all. How do I blame that you are not switching on your mobile? That means you are not doing anything. There are real challenges over there. Whether it is bandwidth or maybe in our problem with this, there are plenty of issues to be solved over there. Now, what happened is I, I should admit that in before 2020, 20 March, I think we are almost third anniversary to COVID, COVID, very close tonight, another four days to go, right? We never had any exposure to online learning, online teaching also. But within a week's time, the entire institution switched over to online learning so efficient. And um, I, I am so happy to share with you the kind of exercises that we tried to do. In fact, prior to discussion here, I was mentioning about, you know, prior to recording session, I was talking about the values, the kind of extracurricular activities students need to be engaged in for development of, you know, whole personality, rounded personality. Coming to the kind of, you know, further to that, students were encouraged to go with this uh, MOOCs. We, we had actually uh, partnered with course around, you know, ISOs, IARS, and some the ICT Academy of Government of India Initiative and so on. To my surprise, more than 10,000 courses were completed by our students during that one, one and a half years time. 10,000, even teachers could complete about 1,000 course, courses. And uh, surprisingly, okay, if you uh, if you say that with the online, going, online teaching is going to be, online learning is going to be effective or not, if you look at the placement records, I could see that the placement of that so-called COVID batch has been equally or better than the other batches earlier. How is it that to know they could do such a fantastic placement uh, strategy? They could do it. And uh, it was very interesting to me. Today, what I'm looking at is, I want to do all those activities that I was doing earlier and in person. But at this, probably even more than that. But I want the technology to support the same kind of education, same kind of activities, same kind of events to be done in mass, uh, to reach out to the mass people, mass... Uh, so basically reach the unreached. Exactly, to re how to reach the unreached, the, all these stuff that we are carrying out. So that you know, those people will also be with us and they will be equally fortunate to have this kind of an education to come up with an overall crowded personality. Okay, so basically we are looking up the local uh, yes. and also globalizing the entire workforce, which the technology can drive into that. Uh, Dr. Ivan, uh, if you would like to add some points to them. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. The question I would like to pause here is more with regards to how can we teach students to ask questions? If we do that, no matter which chat GBT comes, we would still be able to supersede all the requirements that we are looking forward for. In doing this, uh, the anecdote that I'm going to mention is with regards to a case study that we took, which was highly successful. and. Uh, this is a, a group of a cohort of about 12 odd students which we wanted to experiment on a project which was given to us by United Board in blending different kinds of learning that you would have 
classroom, outside classroom, diversities that you would see within the student crowd. Hence, we had a cohort of students from engineering, from psychology, from architecture, from management, all of them come together and had around five verticals created which are predominantly theme-based agriculture, healthcare, disaster management, water management, which are immediate requirements for us. For the positive of time, I'll just take one example, which is healthcare. We said universities or colleges are predominantly focusing on their existence based on catering requirements of the community around. And your task is go out of the campus, identify that one big problem people are facing, Ask this question, come back to the university, we'll have a jury. If your jury approves what your thought processes or the so-called problem statements are relevant to the current community leading to innovation, you will get $200 into your account for you to start with. And it's multidisciplinary because somebody would work on technical side to identify research papers, identify problem statements, etc. Somebody would be working on the workforce management manpower management, somebody would work on finance management, somebody else would work on the community-based learning, somebody else would go and identify, sensitize the crowd in terms of themes which would be psychology-based and etc. These people went out to one of the villages very close by to our university called Bairo Mangla, and then they identified one of the PHCs, the primary healthcare center doctor which said, we have a very disturbing problem here and the problem is an age group of 16 to 22 suffering from type 2 diabetics because of a very apparent problem which is this river, the Vishabhati river which is there. And it is so seen that the age group of 16 to 22 is suffering from type 2 diabetics. But if analyzed, identified at the early phase, we can flip it across in terms of giving them a remedial you know, measures. But the problem is this age group is so vulnerable, it's difficult for them to come and get themselves pricked and they're so scared about it. Can you do something about it? They came back pitched on this problem, the problem was approved, given them the incentives of what they were supposed to deserving. To cut the long story stall, we had in two years time, the students, this cohort of 12 of them, coming on with an indigenous product, which was patented by Indian Patent Authority. <coughs> and they worked on a simple principle of physics. You have your index finger getting inside this instrument, utilize the property of light, multiple scattering that gets in onto the human body, throws across a sucrose level, which was about 85 to 86 percentage of sensitivity and specificity. Now, the approach the students used, vis-a-vis -vis the classroom teaching approach, which was there, and the kind of outcome the students came out with, was so humongous. These people went out from here. As an alumni, they came back. The first thing they identified and asked us, how is a device working? which is currently been sourced or parked in the PHCs of these different, you know, organizations around there, you know, different villages around there. We found somebody who was really lethargic in the classroom, when went out to the community, was the one who was performing extraordinarily well. And this was a test case which we tried out. And on this basis is where we are bringing about theme-based curriculum into the subjects. And it is not easy, as we discussed in the beginning, one of the major issues that we have is building competency. Our teachers would not be prepared to have them embraced. But if we need to add them embraced, we need industry connect. So my first requirement in order to the uh, Microsoft platform is how can we have this platform built, which would empathize at the same time, have a kind of synergy built across the universities or colleges around where they can support by bringing in this kind of concept at the same time, roll it out to students whom we call as tech-driven learning, or it could be even to a level where preparing themselves for next-gen technologies or kind of, you know, requirements that they might have. And uh, I believe uh, each one of us was seated down here. If we can get with the help of so-called disconnect, industry partners should definitely connect us, not just with other industry giants, but also with academia community, with such good practices which have been deployed there, and help assist by driving them through n number of such potentials available across. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ivan. So I'm sure we have taken a lot of insight of how a blended learning, a project based, that is really a, a, a something which is having a lot of value. Thanks uh, to both of our speakers. I move on to Chandrasekhar. Uh, sir, I have a question to you on what role do you see uh, education admission solution playing in the future of uh, higher education? How is your uh, anthology solu uh, solving uh, for helping institute to attract good quality students? solving for automation of several tasks, leveraging AI, leveraging analytics, 
to improve the um, institute productivity. Sure. Thank you very much, uh, Rob. And in that, but that's a very complex question, and I'm not chat GPT, so if I break it up into smaller parts and try to address yeah. the question, right? So, in all the examples that you gave, what we are trying to do is get to an outcome. What the educational institute is trying to get to an outcome. And I simplify this in our model, which we call as PPT for outcome. What is PPT? Right? PPT is process, people who are participating in the process, and the technology that is supporting it. Right? And when you look at a mixture of these, right, in terms of what attacks a student or what drives an operational efficiency, is a direct function of the experience that the constituent is having, is having in that process. Right? If you look at the three buzzwords that happen across the world, right? we talked about attack, we talked about engage, we talked about retail. Right? Everything's got to do with student experience. Right? When we were talking about uh, learning outcomes, we spoke about how do I engage? Right? How do I create an inclusive platform? What is the inclusive platform? Inclusive platform could mean to many of us that whether I'm sitting in a village in in any part of even though whether I'm sitting in a classroom there, I need to be able to learn. That is inclusive. Right? The other one that we don't need to in many cases in India is saying, what if I'm visually impaired? And I'm writing in a village in India. Right? How do I learn? Right? And those are thoughts that we bring it to our technology to make sure that we are making this own process inclusive, whether you look at it from an admissions perspective, whether you look at it from a teaching and learning perspective. What the medical school will just saying, while I'm teaching you all this theory, whether you pass or not pass is going to depend on what you do in the clinical rotation, which is the practical application, identification of a problem and solving of a problem. And that's an approach that we need to start making on compass encompassing. And we do have platforms and practices that are available to be bring together the technology that is required to require to deliver all this. All right, so that's broadly how how we are. Okay, so basically we are we look up a re-engineering process instead of teaching A B C. I'll start with Z and say that let me see the outcome now and then rework and see what is that skill which is required for today's students and then start both for the faculties and the uh, students, what are the inputs which has to be given? Thank you so much, uh, Chandrasekhar. So let me go on to the next question to Dr. Chitra and Dr. Ashok. Um, how should the educator make themselves uh, future ready to meet the growing demands and adoption of tech-driven learning? Thank you for the opportunity. Good afternoon to everybody here. So I have a couple of points to say, like how we can equip ourselves to uh, enable students to become the future workforce uh, with the help of tech-driven learning. First and foremost, I feel that uh, the educators should be lifelong learners with a growth mindset. And with this, we should be able to use high quality interactive educational tools and apps because it, it is uh, tech-driven. And we also have to uh, uh, generate e-content that is uh, very flexible and which is personalized because as everyone talked about uh, students are all of different levels some are advanced learners some are average learners and some are slow learners so when we are able to develop e-content ourselves looking into the levels of the students then it can be self-paced and they can learn it at their convenience and that will provide a um, uh, measure for the students to improve themselves and also it's very important as uh, uh, Mr. Amit was talking about communication through whatever means so I feel we all have to uh, create professional networks join those networks to share newly explored technology trends and ideas regularly uh, then we have to encourage the use of technology with resilience persistence and increased interaction so it's very easy for us to adapt quickly as we all know that we elders adapt to the change in technology much slow, slower than our students so i think this kind of networking will help us adapt to the changing technology uh, quickly and uh, i also feel that increased use of games and simulations creates a lot of interest among students 
AR technologies, VR technologies and so on. And uh, one more point that uh, you had mentioned about uh, reverse mentoring. The same, I put it as we adopt the feedback system from our students for us to continuously improve our methodology and ensure that the students are benefited. So it's uh, the terminology is different. We just say the feedback system. Feedback and feed forward. Yeah, exactly. Okay, can I have Dr. Ashok? Yes, sir. I'm the odd man out. And unfortunately, uh, good or bad, I have been adopting it and uh, I'm quite forceful about it because the tomorrow is all going to be about how well uh, your teaching and training is going to be and how well the technology is going to drive that. As far as medicine is concerned, because I'm the odd man out, I said that medicine, none of us, I believe, what happens in the medicine because uh, my course is partly about 20%, uh, whether it is off or online, offline, hybrid, whichever way you look into it. And I've also seen that um, this is a study which was done in one of in uh, MassGen, where they say that uh, the period of the attention, as far as the students are concerned, is hardly less than ten minutes. After then, after that, they are thinking of the girlfriend, what they had yesterday night, and that is the eighty percent of what happened. The teacher is actually talking, trying to finish off the R, so it doesn't happen. So we feel that uh, classroom teaching, unless a person like me, I shout, I really, my voice is very loud, so I'm pretty far, far back. Otherwise, I would practically blast into everybody's ear. Uh, that kind of person, probably, I make my class students active and listen to me a little bit. Uh, of course, I make it a little bit more interesting. I'm just bluffing what I do. But that very few people can actually take a class for the exact one hour. So that is one thing. And... Uh, Ultimately, bulk of our teaching happens in the hospital. So that is cannot substitute whatever means of offline, online, artificial intelligence, whatever we take, that is not going to substitute. We do a lot of AI, AI in the sense in terms of making diagnosis, in terms of maybe arriving at an algorithm which can narrow down your process of diagnosis and treatment options which can be an exposure to students so that they too take it up. That's very important. And we also come to an algorithm like finding out various like x-rays. We have been trying to come up with algorithms saying that normal x-rays and abnormal x-rays. And maybe feed up some biochemical things to the charts in order to come to a fair amount. And we can also come up to probably how well we So it is not that we, I'm against technology. We need to adopt it. I'm not afraid of technology because ChatGPT is not a challenge for me. It is going to be a solution that's going to help me in the long run. I want students to use it. I want students to be friendly in such a way that it can be driven forward. Okay, it's more of an in inclusive technology, what the other speakers said, and also the simulation-based. Simulation. Helps a lot for us. That's true. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Asho. Uh, moving on to Sandeep. Uh, so what are the some um, uh, ethical considerations that are raised when implementing emerging technology uh, in education and how can they be addressed uh, with the increasing use of online learning platforms? What measure can be taken up to ensure the privacy and security of the student data? So uh, once again, I am also open out <clears throat> like uh, Dr. Ashok. I am uh, actually a technologist by profession and uh, from last three years I am working uh, for higher education, digital transformation. There is one uh, very important thing which we have to understand. Educator who is teaching to the student may not be a good implementer or may not be a good person who can manage the operations. So when we are all talking about the technology, I feel the most important part is to have a right resource to understand technology in our ecosystem, in the education field, because you can talk about the techno uh, education, you can deliver the education, but I feel the person who understands the technology can bring the solution up to your expectation, what you want. So the integration is very important. When the student takes an admission till his exit, the entire data flow into the same application. Now, these are the few things I will take quickly um, because I will not take much of time. Identification of a right resource who can understand the technology identification adoption of a right framework 
required to uh, you know bringing the technology into the institution to bring it to the digital transformation level so there is levels so when you go for a digital transformation so you have to check your digital transformation journey as well again microsoft has a solution where you can put your status today and you can see either you are 30% 40% 60% or 100% digital transformation has been done or not end to end integration of various application to club the data it should not go out of it right platform and partner to implement that is another very important part single size doesn't fit to all we all have different need different people different courses so we have to identify what is the right solution fit to my requirement and then adopt it now coming to data security again amit has pointed out very 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 important part as a technologist i am part of uh, you know uh, technology group that is cio group of india so we foresee the kind of threat is coming up and believe me or not higher education is on the highest target because they understand the weakness of higher education that we don't have the right set of people in the system and they can target and hack our system so gtn is which is called zero trust is most important thing which is coming up and we have to evaluate we have to understand then security policies this is very well missing i tried to implement a security policy it backfired me like anything because adoption acceptability was not there two more points i would take yes yes one is identity and access management take care who should have what data access there is again a lot of important point and the last not the least continuous monitoring if these things are in place then you can have a control on the data security and that has to be again the right set of people we have to invest on it because they will take us to the next level correct it's very important because there's ultimately the students data which we have it up and it's in multiples and even a small error in that okay will have a lot of implications so thanks for the lot of inputs which you have given sir so next question i'll have to shashidhar uh, uh, sir and sujit uh, what are your thoughts on student centered learning approach and their potentials to improve the students outcome in higher education and make them a future ready and followed with this okay how do you see the technology supporting or hindering uh, the implementation of student centered learning approach actually good afternoon everyone the my idea is i think the hybrid model may works better now industry also is working with hybrid mark hybrid model in this is those who are interested they can go there other rest of the people can work from home the similar model can be implemented in teaching because tech driven learning will be more effective using chat gpt or any other model we have to implement so that <clears throat> hybrid model should work and then it should take to the next step hybrid model must be implemented to solve mac or nba or everything and not only that see so totally that is learning process from the admission to the kid the lost all the level should be covered and then evaluation process also must be taken care and not only that in the classroom people who are taking class must they those who are absent on that day due to health issues also must be able to listen from their home so every subject is mental engineering may be electrical and all those things also we have to take it through the tech driven technology Good. so that entire society will be a balanced Must. properly otherwise definitely it will be a problem for only one state the rest of the stream will be in the problem even teaching line as well as the industry side also will be in the problem so equal balancing of all the disciplines is a blend yeah through the tech driven idea only correct correct correct, correct. can i take some pointers from sujit so on the questions then thank you for the opportunity uh, so uh, like many other people i have also online now i come from a slightly different kind of an institution as opposed to the others here what i observe is here most of the institutions that people are representing here are large institutions with multiple thousand people students uh, enrollment uh, multiple uh, departments etc ours is a tiny institute with less than 1000 students only one uh, department which is it we can experiment a lot yes so we 
That's an added advantage when the maths are very challenging. We, we, we definitely do not suffer from some of the issues that many of the institutions here are. For example, uh, information or technology or system uh, dissemination is not that big a problem for us as compared to others. It quickly happens. So the, uh, the problems that we face here is how to uh, personalize the learning for our research students because they are the sort of fountainheads of learning for us. So how we have some research problems defined. A student comes in, now the kind of expertise that he or she needs to carry out the research is very, very different. It's not run of the mill, cut and dry kind of uh, expertise that we need. It's a journey. It's a journey and it's a very personalized set of skills. How do we impart that? Even we do not have it. So we de definitely look towards technology okay. to uh, personalize uh, learning content, particularly for very advanced learners like research students. And then how do we uh, sort of trickle that down to uh, graduate and undergraduate? Take him. So uh, these are some of the some of the problems that many others, you know, uh, probably will discuss uh, over lunch. So I would like to rest. Okay. So basically, how do we uniquely have a personalized, cu a customized technology which can help the research and it's, which is also genuine enough because we cannot have a duplication of replications. So thank you so much. Sir. So I'll take the last question with Amit. So can we come back to you? Sure. Yeah. And I'm going to show one thing. Um, can we just turn the projector? I just want to show one thing because I love the conversation. I love your girl. So this is the education transformation framework, right? Uh, I'll send you the URL. It's easy for you to do the URL later. What we did was we actually just, everything we talked about, we tried to visualize. So if you think about it, teaching and learning, student success, uh, secure and connected campus, the identity conversation, academic research. We talked all of these things. And what we are doing is when we, when we create our technology platform, we are uh, connecting as everyone said, it, it needs to be a complete kind of connected ecosystem of things, right? From future ready skills, learning spaces, collaborative learning, learning management tools, uh, alumni management, you know, I'm sure that that comes up, student car, uh, completion, retention, recruitment, uh, security of the whole thing, data sharing, institution operations, facilities management, all of these things have been, and of course, academic research which is both within the institution and external to the institution as well. We, I mean, these are case study after case study for you to actually look at. I mean, one of my favorite examples, and we've got live URLs. We, these are actually live examples. So if you go, go here, for example, this is live data from the University of Texas dashboard on their enrollments, right? This is live as of 2022, right? So th these are examples, I just want to give you a flavor of how our technology has been used in, in every aspect of teaching and learning, but not just that, but also the, you know, running of the actual, um, uh, you know, institution. So it's called Education Transformation Framework. If you ever have a chance, uh, I happen to be one of the authors of this. Um, we, we wrote a book on this. Um, so if you go and look up the education journey dot microsoft.com you'll be able to go through this journey with us um, and understand where you are on on your transformation journey i mean i could go through go through many of these things that's not the intent of today's uh, thing but i thought given everything i thought if i was to summarize and give you one tool this is the one tool i would give you i'll send you the link to this but anyway just thought i would share one one thing so what should be the key consideration from digital infrastructure point for the best in class modern campus? Yeah, so this is a this is a question I get asked a lot, right? And again, I've got a different architecture conversation that we can have. But literally it has to be grounded in the in the IT operations. I see a lot of institutions having the ambition. And sometimes, as I sometimes, you know, I, I say this jokingly but with a sense of sincerity is that sometimes technologies capabilities today are out are above what a lot of technology ambitions are in education you we've seen the ambition in health we've seen the ambition in banking as everyone just talked about upi is a great example of that 
but we're not seeing that same level of ambition, you know, across education. There are pockets, there are pockets. I love the fact that we've adopted it. I love the fact that we were forced into it. So IT as a backbone to your institution is no longer an afterthought. And therefore, frameworks like what I just shared are going to be paramount. That journey needs to start now. Um, so areas of, of interest for everyone to, uh, if you want to take notes on this, cybersecurity, identity management, access control. There's, those are table sticks. Like we, if we are running an institution without that, it's going to be very difficult because as Sir uh, identified, cybersecurity is the number one problem. Education is the most attacked industry on the planet, full stop. Appreciate the opportunity and uh, really love the energy of this room today. Thank you for being such a great kid. Moderator and Kenny. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. Uh, so we have a post to the pin. Yes. Yeah. So we would like to have a win win situation. We are not competitors. Nobody's up and nobody's down. We'll walk together. Yes. And uh, industry academia partnership. I'm sure we have started the journey and we will churn is the journey and we will process it. And all of us, we will take an insight. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll not take much time. I know it's been a uh, pretty intense conversation. I loved uh, sitting there at the back and listening to all of you. Uh, my name is Sadi Badur and uh, Microsoft India, I head Microsoft Echo the Center. It's an experience center. And uh, I get to host one customer every single day. So my journey happens there. Yeah, so uh, most of you use the term chat GPT. Yes. So you found getting to a bit of a demo. So in the hub, you can use that at your institutions. So um, I'm sure all of you would have Spend some time here, yeah. chat GPT. I don't think anybody is left behind in this, right? So, <laughs> my the title session is Future is Here. Okay, so many times we talk about future. Uh, we always look at, hey, if something has come now, it's going to take probably a few months and years for it to mature and then we'll adopt. No, I think the time is gone, right? In fact, uh, this is the era of Copilot, right? By the way, chat GPT, using the chat GPT, it is more different than your digital companion. Okay, and that's something which will help us stay productive, do our job better, right? I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure how many have experienced the new search engine Bing. Um, now, this is what happened, right? So this morning, this happened just just half an hour back. I was, I was asking, hey, I'm presenting to key industry leaders in academia. Um, I need to know about three institutions. Can you help? He said, which three institutions? I said, you know, um, I said RV University, ICFAI, and Indus International School, right? So rather than me going through three different websites and looking for information, it beautifully summarizes in terms of it searches independently the institutions and it beautifully summarizes, um, you know, something about each of the institutions, right? So this is the future of how conversation happens with the data. This is the time where information is looking for you. That means I will have a co-pilot. If you look at the real, you know, meaning of co-pilot, co-pilot is the one who basically is there for the pilot to make sure things happen in the right fashion. Co-pilot will not take decision on pilot's behalf. No, pilot is the main person. So co-pilot here, it's AI powered, will not do anything without your permission. You are in control, right? So co-pilot is something which is going to give you information. You decide what you want to do with that. We just announced co-pilot for all of these softwares, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Teams. So you'll have conversation capability on <coughs> your data within these tools, right? That way. Uh, so, I hope uh, you will all find this uh, session very insightful and thought-provoking. And it has been fantastic to hear about the ways in which the blended learning technology is breaking down the job of the barriers and promoting equity in education. And I'm sure we'll be thinking about the potentials of uh, AI-driven tools like ChatGPT to enhance the personalized learning experience for the students. Um, and I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to uh, our panel and also the speakers for sharing their expertise and engaging in a lively discussion with us today. We hope this session has sparked some interest, um, interesting ideas, even protective efficacy and perspective, and we look forward to continuing this dialogue in the future. Uh, until then, let us keep learning and exploring the exciting world of uh, tech driven education, signing off from the discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you.